Hey, welcome to another video. So today what we're gonna be talking about is how to properly set up your location targeting if you are running a campaign for a local business. So whether you're a local business or you have a client that's a local business, this video is gonna go over how to properly set up um, all the settings so you can get the best results. So if you're new here, my name is Chris. I talk about pretty much everything there is to do with Google ads, um, how to run them, how to optimize them, all that kind of good stuff. So if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel to see some more content. And um, let's just kind of dive right in. So the first thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to targeting locations is um, let's talk about targeting instead of exclusions first. So we'll cover both of those. So the first thing that I think about when I'm doing location targeting is I want it to be, um, I guess, a bit more granular. So one thing I used to do this, um, I don't do it anymore. You can do radius targeting. So you could do like, you know, let's say you serve 20 miles around Denver, for example, you can go like that, just hit target and it just drops a big old radius around Denver. And that seems great, it seems simple uh, simple enough, but the challenge with this, and I'll get into this in a little bit, you don't have as much like granular control over it. So what I do, let me just remove this, what I do in a lot of cases, if you have a bigger area like this, I figure out what zip codes the client serves, and I literally just go by zip code, and you can target individual zip codes like this. What I'll do is I'll go and I'll look up um, a list of the zip codes in the area. There's a ton of websites that have just maps. If you want to target city by city, you can do that as well. But I've found just going zip code works really well. If you serve uh, individual counties, you can input those individual counties. But I recommend trying to get it as granular as possible because later on, I'll show you how you can adjust bids for each one of these counties. Uh, because the reality is there's, or not counties, zip codes. The reality is that a lot of these are going to get um, different levels of performance. So when you're optimizing your account further down the line, you wanna know which zip codes are performing the best and you can allocate more of your budget towards the one that ones that perform the best and take budget away from the ones that are just not performing as well. So that's how I set up the targeting. Now, another important thing is the exclusions. You're gonna see right here, I have 110 excluded locations. So if I zoom out here, you're gonna see it's probably gonna be a little bit ridiculous, but this is how you kind of prevent Google from going into these other markets. Um, I exclude every other state uh, in the United States. I exclude Canada, Mexico, um, and then to go you know a little bit deeper i will literally just exclude all the other counties around my targeting area in some cases i've gone as far as excluding zip codes around the uh, around the targeting area so the reason why i do this is i want to constrain google as much as possible so when you're running a local campaign you don't want google showing your ad way up here in boulder for example so having these exclusions layered in there is a great way to kind of prevent wasted ad spend coming from outside of that service area and you know the reality is if you have clicks coming from outside the service area it's going to be a waste of money for either yourself or your client or whoever's running the campaign and uh, we want to constrain that as much as possible because it would be great if google literally just showed your ads within this targeting radius the reality of it is sometimes people might work in this zip code and they might live up here or something like that. And Google can get a little bit confused. Sometimes leads can come from outside of those. So just uh, kind of closing in those exclusions as much as possible really, really helps to constrain traffic and uh, make sure that Google doesn't kind of show your ads all over the place. So that is how I set up the actual location targeting itself. A couple other really important things that you want to have set up is after you've done this, if you come down here, hit your location options. If you are, let's say a local service business, for example, you always wanna have this option selected, presence, people in or regularly in your targeted locations. The reason being is you can see this recommended option right here, it's presence or interest, people in regularly in or who've shown interest in your targeted locations. If you have this one selected, what's gonna happen is you could have somebody in a totally other state, you know, searching for, um, whatever your niche is, this one is junk removal, searching for junk removal Denver, and you don't wanna show your ad in another state for that search term. So when you have this first one selected, that can happen, but selecting the second one here can really help to prevent that from happening. And then on top of that, layering in all these exclusions can help to um, prevent that from happening as well. So 
On top of that, exclude. I want to go with presence or interest people in regularly in or who've shown interest in your excluded locations. This kind of goes without saying, if somebody's searching for junk removal in Arizona, we don't want to have our ad show for that search term if they're within our targeted location. So in certain cases, um, depending on the business, it could make sense to do presence or interest. So let's say, you know, somebody comes to your location or they're like searching for a dentist or something like that. In those cases, it could make sense to go presence or interest. But for a lot of local service based businesses, you want people within that search area. So the best thing to do is go presence people in or regularly in your targeted locations. And that's going to really help to um, make sure your traffic is tightly defined uh, within that local area. So next, what I'm going to show you is the actual significance of splitting out your targeting like that, making it more granular. I'm going to show you uh, how you can see the data, you know, see how many clicks are coming from which market, the conversions, all that kind of stuff, and then show you how you can make adjustments and optimizations based on how your campaign is performing. So this is the power of actually splitting your locations out into more granular areas because you're going to be able to see data like this, where if you just kind of target things that are, as a radius, you're not really going to be able to drill into the data and make adjustments. You can see where things are converting, but you can't make bid adjustments or anything like that. So this is why I recommend uh, going with zip code targeting, city targeting, county targeting, whatever level you want to track by, I recommend doing this because as you can see, and by the way, to get here, just select the campaign level. You can do it by ad group, but select the campaign level, come down here to locations, hit locations, and you should have just targeted locations selected. Um, and once you do that, you can sort by whatever metric you want. But for me, whenever I'm looking at these, and I'm not going to be making optimizations right now, but whenever I'm looking at these, um, I want to see what locations are performing better than others, which ones are performing worse. And what you're able to do is you can see this bid adjustment column right here, and you can adjust your bids up and down on a location by location basis based on the areas that you targeted. So just looking at these numbers, um, I can see right off the bat, this particular zip code, or that's not a zip code, this particular town is converting very, very well so far. Um, there's still not a ton of data on this account, so I would let a little bit more data run through this, but just off of um, what I'm seeing right here, this particular location is converting really well, 26%. In this case, you can tell Google with this bid adjustment column, hey, I wanna increase my bids in that particular market, just because if that market is performing well and I'm increasing my bids. I'm essentially telling Google, I want to get a bit more traffic from that market. So I would only make small adjustments so I can do an increase of like 3%. Um, and then as we're going down through this data right here, so this market right here, 7.14% conversion rate, that's not good. So what I would do in this case is I would probably go here, hit the little pencil, hit decrease, and then probably do the same kind of 3%, something like that. You don't want to um, go in and make these massive, massive bid adjustments because I can kind of confuse Google. Um, on the other hand, if you do see a market, like let's say there is a market like this, like 20 clicks, no leads, nothing. Um, I would probably just go and remove it from my location targeting. So you can just go here, edit, and you can just straight up remove it right there, or you can just go into the location settings and remove it that way. So this is the power of layer, like kind of having that much more complicated uh, location targeting is you're able to see a lot more in-depth data. And when you have that in-depth data, you can make even better adjustments to your account, better optimizations. And, uh, and yeah, so that is how I set up location targeting on any of the accounts that I'm running. I hope this video was helpful. If you did find it helpful, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this. And um, if you have anything else you wanna see, just drop it in the comments below. And if you are a business owner looking to uh, you know, run a Google Ads cam campaign for your business, uh, there will be a link in the description for a consultation. But in the meantime, I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.